Hello, this is the insurance exam queen and this is going to be a lesson on dwelling policies. In this you'll find dwelling policies on the property exam or the personal lines exam. Um, please make sure to subscribe. That's what helps make sure that I'm able to do this full time and support all of you as you take and pass your exam, which is so exciting because insurance is such an amazing career and you are stepping into an amazing opportunity by getting this test done and passed. So let's go ahead and jump into dwelling policies. Now dwelling policies are typically purchased by landlords. Now this is not always to say that all dwellings are sold to landlords. Anybody can buy a dwelling if it fits your needs. It's just typically purchased by landlords because a dwelling policy does not automatically come with liability, which is protection if anybody gets hurt in your home, um, they you know trip and fall, your dog bites them, liability is what pay out to them. Dwelling policies do not come with liability. A landlord, he doesn't need liability because he's not living there. It's not his dog at the house. It would be the tenants. So the tenants would need liability, the landlord does not. Since a dwelling policy does not come with liability, that's a reason for a landlord to need dwelling. Same with contents. There are no contents coverage on dwelling either. So we actually draw a little crop, you know, a no symbol to, to say that we have don't have liability or contents. And contents is your, your personal stuff, your clothes, your shoes, your furniture, your pots, your pans, like everything that you would own and move into a U-Haul with you is your contents. So a landlord doesn't need contents because he doesn't live there. Again, it's he owns the house, but he doesn't live in the house. The tenants are who live in the house. The tenants would need liability and the tenants would need contents coverage. They're going to need to get a homeowner's policy. I know that seems weird. They're not technically homeowners, but HO4 policies are unique in that way. However, back to dwelling policies, there is no liability and no contents coverage on the dwelling, which is what makes them perfect for landlords who do not need those coverages. Now, another thing about dwelling is that they don't require that the person who buys the policy also lives there. Homeowners, on the other hand, requires that you must live at the residence if you are the policy holder. Like the person who owns the house should live in the house. Kind of weird for renters again, but um, on a dwelling policy, the owner of the house is not required to live at the house. And that makes a dwelling policy perfect again for landlords. So that's who typically will buy these policies. Now, we are gonna learn all about dwelling policies right now. And there's a couple of things with dwelling policies. So tree coverage. So when we talk about tree coverages, homeowners policies, dwelling policies come with tree coverage because trees are valuable. If your tree was to be struck by lightning and burned down or crashed into by a car, you are losing value. You have money, you have value in that tree. So insurance companies will replace the value of that tree up to $500 per tree. And it is limited usually to five or 10% of A depending on the policy we're looking at. But it is five, the most important thing to remember is 500 per tree. So 500 per tree on either a, a DP2 or a DP3 and we'll talk about what that means. And on a DP1, there's actually no tree coverage at all. So this is why we have the little tree chart here. And we'll talk a little bit more about trees. And then um, we're going to chart out and draw the different dwelling policies. So with insurance coverages, sometimes we struggle a little bit because there's a difference between coverages and um, policies. Coverages pretty much come on every policy type. So like we're gonna learn there's, there's DP1 which is known as basic. There's DP2, known as broad. And then there's DP3, known as special. And again, we're gonna talk more about those, but, oh, spelled that wrong, whatever. Um, so policies are the different levels of coverage, essentially. Not, oh, sorry, levels of coverage. <laughs> Trying to explain coverages over here, that's a little silly, I know. All right, hang on, let me fix my little guy, sorry about this. 
special i a l okay special so you have policies and then you have coverages all of the coverages pretty much i mean basically unless unless not there is actually one little exception on coverage e here there is an exception to a dp1 but we'll talk about that but pretty much all of these coverages so all of these coverages apply to every one of these policies you will always find these coverages on these policies so it's not the coverages that make the policy different what makes the policy difference is what would trigger the policy to provide the coverage what is going to make a dp1 pay out coverage a for this house and what determines that is what we call perils 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 are known as the cause of loss cause of loss the reason you're filing a claim it's the fire the lightning the wind the hail what determines what these policies will do is what perils they cover not all of these cover the same types of perils dp1 will cover very minimal perils in fact only fire lightning and internal explosion that is very minimal perils that a dp1 will cover but it will cover fire lightning and wind with all these coverages with our one exception a dp2 will respond to different perils a dp2 is going to respond to everything a dp1 did but it will also add on additional perils that add more instances of things happening where a dp1 is only fire lightning internal explosion that's it a dp2 is like we're going to cover burglary and bursting of heating systems and the weight of snow and ice and sleet and we're going to cover collapse a dp2 is going to have way more perils that it will respond to than a dp1 and that's what makes it broad it's it's covering way more perils than it typically would now then a dp3 that's special it's so special it don't need any perils a dp3 is actually open perils meaning it will literally cover any potential peril that happens unless it's excluded so there is always exclusions on every single policy for sure but a dp3 has a little bit extra exclusions since it is willing to cover anything and everything even if a, a cockroach got mutated and grew into the size of a huge building whatever and it could crush houses that would be covered on a dp3 because it's not excluded giant bugs being radiated is not excluded so it would be covered on a dp3 people with a dp2 or a dp1 would have no house but the dp3 people they could have their house rebuilt hopefully in a new location or we got the cockroach killed but whatever okay all right now um your and your policies by the way speaking of cockroaches might as well talk about this since you'll memorize this now on your exam um bugs uh, uh vermin insects insects and vermin are not um covered on your policy unless it was hidden from view so like if you actively see termites in your house and you've had people come out to try and fix them or whatever and termites end up eating your house and it's completely destroyed and totaled then the insurance will not pay out because you knew about it you were working on it they will only pay out if it was totally hidden from view and you didn't know there wasn't anything that you could have done and then the house collapsed because of insects and vermin then they would pay out and that's a dp2 and three by the way dp1 would not cover uh insects and vermin so that that's just key thing in there to, to to talk about since we were on the subject of cockroaches okay so we have our dp3 special all right yes perils dp3 covers anything cockroaches whatever covers all the stuff not cockroaches but radioactive huge massive ones is what i'm saying random stuff that anything anything 
DP3 special is open perils. Anything that could happen that is not excluded would be covered on a DP3. And that's why it's so special. But what makes it not unique is again all these coverages which we will talk about will apply to every single one of these policies it's just understanding why these policies are different is because the perils they respond to so a dp1 will respond to very minimal perils fire lightning internal explosion a dp2 will respond to much more perils including burglary and bursting of heating systems and a DP3 will respond to every single peril unless it's excluded because it's so special. But all of these will have all of these. Okay. All right. Now that we talked about that, let me clear up the board a little bit. Okay. That's good. All right. So let's talk about a DP1. So a DP1 basic, and boy, do we mean basic. This is the type of policy that would be bought by somebody I would like to say is named Bob. And Bob likes his coffee black, and he likes to do everything himself. He will rebuild the entire house with his bare hands and his black coffee because that's the kind of man Bob is. Bob is very basic. He can take care of himself. He don't need anything fancy. And that is what a DP1 is. A DP1 covers the bare bone minimum of fire, lightning. Oh, oopsie. Sorry. <laughs> DP1 will cover the bare bone minimum of fire, lightning and internal internal explosion there is a difference if the explosion originated from inside the house it would be covered if the explosion originated outside of the house it would not be covered that is what internal explosion means. The explosion has to originate from inside the house in order for the DP1 to respond with the said coverages. So the only way a DP1 basic will pay out any of these coverages is if fire, lightning, or internal explosion were to happen. Because Bob is basic and that's all he needs. Everything else he don't care about. He's worried about fire, lightning, and internal explosion. And that's all he needs. And he buys a DP1. Now, there is an option of adding a little cream and sugar. Like maybe you care a little bit about wind and hail. And what about aircrafts falling and maybe some volcanoes going off. I, I might care a little bit more than fire, lightning, and internal explosion. So what we can offer Bob is a little, little cream and sugar. So we can offer him what we call wharves. W-H-A-R-V-E-S. Now, wharves, though, is not the name of what we sell him. These are simply the additional perils that you're going to add. You're going to actually add the coverage, what is called ECP, ECP. And we're going to draw a little thing here. Make sure we remember this is, this is wharves. I know it feels like I tricked you here, but I want to make sure we make a point that we understand that Extended ECP represents extended coverage perils. I'll write it over here for you. ECP means extended, extended coverage perils. We are extending this inky dinky fire lightning internal explosion to include wharves so we are extending coverage perils right and in order for these to pay out the peril has to be over here so extended 
coverage perils you're adding on wharves to the fire, lightning, and internal explosion, you buy what we call ECP. You buy that package. You're basically buying a package of perils with this extended coverage perils. You buy ECP. It gives you wharves. Wharves would never be like an answer or a question on the exam. This is simply a memorization acronym that we use. They don't talk about wharves. They talk about extended coverage perils. But you need to know that extended coverage perils gives you wharves, wind, uh, wait, yeah, wind, <laughs> what is H? Hail, air, aircraft, riot, vehicle, explosion, smoke. And it's not actually not even necessary that you fully memorize those, but if you've heard it a few times, read it a few times, you, you should probably be able to recall it on the exam um, if needed. But rarely do they really get into the wharfs, like one to two questions. And that's really only if dwelling is a big part of your exam. Okay, now, so Bob buys his basic DP1, which gives him fire, lightning, and internal explosion. That's all he needs. Now, if he wanted a little cream and sugar in his basic black coffee, then he would get a um, the ECPs, which will give him wharfs. Now, if he buys the ECPs, he also has the option then, and only then, to buy what is known as VMM, which is uh, vandalism and malicious mischief. So this would be more perils that you are adding on. <sighs> Drink some water while we're chatting here. Okay, so... If you buy, if you were to buy the ECP, right, you get add some little cream to your coffee, it would give you wharfs. You would then be allowed to also buy VMM, vandalism and malicious mischief. So you have to buy the ECPs first. You cannot buy VMM unless you first purchased ECP. So some, so you could even technically, if we're going to get real technical here, this is called option one and this is called option two. Not that it is important to memorize that, but option one would be adding the ECP. Option two would be ECP and VMM. So cream and sugar to your DP1. Now, Basic Bob needs a DP1. And remember what we said about Basic Bob, where he can rebuild everything himself. So another thing about Basic Bob is that he is cool with actual cash value for the walls and the roof of the house. Oh, and by the way, yeah, of course, this is our little memory chart here. We're actually using a house and we use the door as DP1 to represent it's the first policy available to you. But then you can go inside and get a DP2. So at the door, though, we got our DP1. Now, actual cash value. So Bob is able to rebuild this house with his bare hands. He's not going to need to hire a contractor. He's not going to need to, um, you know, spend a lot of money on it. So he's cool with only getting... The, va the used value of the walls and the roof. He's only getting the used value of the walls and the roof, which means he's not going to get enough money to rebuild his house. He would have to work by himself to make it possible for him to rebuild his house. You're not going to get enough money on a DP1 from the insurance to really build your house if we're doing actual cash value because that means the, va the used value of wood. If, if your shingles on your house, your, you know, siding is 20 years old, they're going to say, okay, siding today is worth this much, subtract 20 years from it, and that's how much money we'll give you for the walls and the roof. That's insane. That's not enough. But Basic Bob is a builder, so, you know, we let him do his thing, whatever. He chooses actual cash value. So that is you very, very unique to a DP1. Every other homeowners, every other dwelling, every other policy ever is going to be actual or replacement cost. DP1 is actual cash value, which is pretty wild. There actually might be like a commercial one. I'm not very well versed in commercial. Most state exams do not require that you need to know commercial very well. 
Um, but we're talking about dwelling. So anyway, every other homeowner's, every other dwelling will be replacement cost for the walls and the roof. DP1 is very unique in that it's actual cash value only um, for the walls and the roof. Okay. And no tree coverage. Remember, there is no tree coverage for a DP1. Bob is way too basic for that. So there's no way he's going to get a DP1 uh, or a, <laughs> no way he's going to get tree coverage. Okay. He may get the AC ECPs if he needs a little cream, you know, get some wharves in there, wind and hail, you know, that could happen for sure. Um, maybe a little sugar with that VMM vandalism and malicious mischief, um, if he wants, but he has to pay extra for those. The DP one is very a la carte. You have to pay extra for every little thing that you get, which Bob kind of likes because then he can pick and choose what he wants. Now a DP two, has a lot less choice, but that's because it just automatically comes with everything in a DP1, which means a DP2 has fire, lightning, and internal explosion. A DP2 has ex extended coverage perils, which gives you wind, hail, aircraft, riot, vehicle, explosion, smoke. A DP2 broad has VMM, vandalism, and malicious mischief. It has all of these and... And it also has the additional perils that we abbreviate as BBB Ice Golf. Now, I do not know these. <laughs> I can, uh, burglary, bursting of heating, something, um, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> the, I know one of these is the weight of ice, snow, and sleet. Uh, C is collapse. Uh, G is glass. Um, o might be falling objects. Falling objects is covered, but I don't know if that's what the O stands for. F is freezing. Um, freezing definitely has a little asterisk to it, by the way. We should just make sure we get that right now. Freezing is covered. Ooh, let me write this over here. Let me write this. This is important. This is one of the big ones they love to ask about. Freezing is only covered, oops, got to spell things right. Ooh, nope, that took away too much. <laughs> Freezing is only covered if the insured, if the insured, freezing is only covered if the insured took steps to maintain freezing is only covered if the insured took steps to maintain heat in the building freezing is only covered if the insured took steps to maintain heat in the building okay so F is freezing. And this, 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 true, true. Every policy, true. Every type, every homeowners, every dwelling. Freezing is only covered if the insured took steps to maintain heat in the building. So if you were to, for instance, go on vacation, like you're in, you live in Michigan, and it's like the deep winter in there, and you're like, I got to get out, and you go to Florida, and you're like, oh, I'm going to turn the heat off. I won't be home. It's possible that your pipes can freeze and then melt and then burst and like cause a flood in your house. If you can prove that you attempted to not have that happen, that you left the heat on or you drained the pipes, the insurance would cover you in that instance. If you do not have evidence that you attempted to maintain heat in the house, they would not cover that claim. They would deny it. And additionally, um, if, for instance, say the power went out and it that's also what led to the freezing, then that is okay, but you had to have tried to take steps to maintain heat. Okay. All right. Now let's go back. Okay. So we were back over here. We were talking about uh, BBB Ice Golf, a DP2. 
So like we said, a DP2 is broad because it has way more than basic bob. So our broad up here, she's got way more. She's got way more to her than basic bob does. She's got the, the latte, right? Basic bob has that just a basic black cup of coffee. Our broad up here, she's, she's definitely got like a latte going on. Um, and she's got all of these, okay? She's got fire and lightning and internal explosion automatically. She's got the extended coverage perils known as wharfs, wind, hail, aircraft, riot, vehicle, explosion, smoke. And she also has the VMM automatically, the vandalism and malicious mischief. And I don't know how my writing got messed up there. <laughs> okay. Ooh, okay. Technology, you know. VMM. Okay. So vandal she's got vandalism and uh, malicious mischief automatically. And she has BBB ice golf. Which, again, we don't need to know too much. But if we remember that freezing, we're doing good. And that freezing is only covered if the insured took steps to maintain heat in the building. Now, another thing um, with... DP2 broad is that she will have all these same coverages. Remember, all these coverages apply to all of these policies. What makes the policies unique is that the perils, the things that happen that they respond to. A DP1 will only respond to minimal perils. A DP2 will respond to much more perils. A DP3 will respond to every peril that is not excluded. Okay. So then we move on to the best, the tippity top, the open, the, the, the best house or you know, the best part of the house, the tippity top, the cream of the crop is DP3 special. And that is because the DP3 is open, totally open to all the things. So it will cover everything not excluded. So it automatically will cover BBB ice golf and the ECPs and, you know, wharfs. It will automatically cover all of that. Because none of those are excluded on a DP3. So they, a DP3 covers everything down below and any other peril not excluded. Now, a really unique thing, though, about open is that um, it will cover theft as well. Theft is not excluded. Now, we need to talk about something, though, because... <laughs> Theft of what? <laughs> if we have no contents, what is this theft of? Well, I'm glad you asked. And that is our segue into talking about coverages. So we talked about the different policies, how a DP1 is very basic Bob. He only has his fire, lightning, internal explosion. Um, if he wants to add some cream and sugar, he can add his ECPs known as wharfs. And he could add the VMM, vandalism and malicious mischief. And he's only getting his used value of wood, his actual cash value. Um, or we can do, you know, the broad. We've got the DP2 broad, which will cover everything inside a DP1 plus BBB ice golf. So this would be more like your latte. And then your DP3 special, which is open perils, is your mocha frappa latte, maca chocolata, ate, whatever. Because it's totally open. It's, it's got all the, that annoying order at Starbucks. It's open to all the sauces and everything. Everything that could happen is open on a DP3. Um, and including theft. Theft of what though? So theft of actually the definition of A. So these coverages are covered on every, every single one of these policies. Remember, right? So it's only the perils that are the difference. It's the, the all the coverages are the same on all the policies. It's, it's the peril that will trigger this coverage to pay out. So the first coverage is dwelling. <laughs> I know, I know. Yes, the name of coverage A is literally the name of the policy. And then it gets a little bit weird because coverage A is all, on dwelling is also coverage A on homeowners. I know. Okay, so coverage A dwelling, um, what this means, this is the walls and roof, walls and roof, okay, walls and roof, and 
that's like an A, right? An A, 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 walls and roof, okay? Coverage A, walls and roof. And what this is saying is that this coverage A is what will pay out to rebuild the walls and the roof of the house. So if the walls and the roof burn down, coverage A is what rebuilds them. So coverage A rebuilds these walls and the roof. That's the only focus of A is the walls and the roof of the house. And that is coverage A. And what they base it off of is what would it cost for us to rebuild the walls and the roof? How much money would we need to rebuild these walls and these roofs? That's what coverage A becomes. So if you have a, you know, regular size house, three bedroom, two bathroom, maybe 300,000 coverage A to rebuild that house. If you had a 10 bedroom, five bathroom, maybe like a million, I don't know. Housing prices are weird everywhere, so it's weird to say, but it's based on the walls and the roof of the house. So how much money would we need to rebuild these walls and these roofs is what coverage A is based on. Now there are technically um, two additional things that fall under coverage A, and that is anything used to service the property. So like a, like a lawnmower, that's supposed to be a lawnmower, lawn mower, that would be coverage A too. So anything used to service the property, to take care of the property. So like think about like a landlord might have a shed in the back where he keeps stuff to mow the lawn and maintain the property. So the landlord would need, you know, lawnmower coverage. So that fits the definition of A as well. The other thing that fits the definition of A would also be like um, any materials or supplies. Materials or supplies that are next to the house that will become part of the house. So if you have like pallet of roof tiles here that you'll install on the roof, that would be a material or supply that is next to the house that will become part of the house and it would also fit the definition of A. So like if this pallet of roof tiles, let's say it got delivered to your house on Wednesday, and you were going to install it on Saturday, but on Thursday somebody stole it, you would actually get coverage A to pay out for the money you lost on the pallet of roof tiles. It wasn't even technically part of your house yet, but your homeowners would pay out for that under coverage A. So coverage A would say, oh, pallet of roof tiles stolen. We're going to pay to replace it. That, however, is only true of on a DP3 theft. If this pallet of roof tiles was stolen, only a DP3 would respond. Because a DP2 and a DP1, there's no T. There's no theft here. So if this pallet of roof was stolen on a 2 or a 1, you would not, cover J would not respond. But if this pallet of roof tiles burned up in a fire, if this pallet of roof tiles burned down, then coverage uh, DP 1, 2, and 3 would respond to that because they all have the, the peril of fire. Fire is always covered, by the way. Just always think fire is covered. That's another uh, potential question they might ask you. Let me jump to the side here and get, take a sip of water. Um, pallet of roof tiles. Yeah, fire, earthquake, okay, yes. Earthquake is excluded, okay? Earthquake is always excluded. Earthquake is always excluded. Earthquake is always excluded. However, the fire, the fire of an earthquake from an earthquake, caused by an earthquake, however you want to say that, the fire resulting from an earthquake, the fire it causes, there we go, that's the way to say it, the fire it causes is covered. 
the fire it causes is covered. So if they were to say, for instance, that you had earthquake, if you had an earthquake cause $5,000 of damage, and you had a fire cause 2,500 in damage, and they will ask how much, how much does, whatever, does the insurer pay? How much does the insurer pay? The answer is right here. Only the fire, only the fire. So $7,500 worth of damage happened to your house. But if this is only from the earthquake, it is not covered. And they would, but they would cover the fire. So fire is always covered. So if an earthquake were to occur and cause damage, no coverage. Now you can endorse it. You can definitely definitely endorse earthquake and by the way what i am saying right now is true for homeowners as well um, and commercial you can endorse earthquake for commercial you can endorse earthquake which means you have to pay extra for it endorse is a written change a written change a written addendum you're changing the policy by saying we will cover earthquake with an endorsement but that will cost money and that is a written change the other thing about earthquake is if you do have it the period of time that would count for one deductible is a 72 hour window so a 72 hour window for all um like damage done so you know technically a claim is like every instance and a volcano a volcano can erupt or an earth earthquake too earthquake and volcano um the they can cause like aftershocks you know like you might like with an earthquake you might get you know hit and then an hours later you get hit again they would count it as one hit and then also with volcanoes as well uh, in a 72-hour window. Okay. <clears throat> so earthquake, endorsement, written change. Yeah. And it's 72-hour window for one, one claim. One claim. I know there's a better way to say this and I'm lacking on it. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So... Earthquake is always excluded. We were talking about fire. Fire is always covered. Pallet of roof tiles. Yes. So um, coverage A, dwelling, which applies to all of these, right? This coverage responds to all the policies. It's just which peril will trigger this coverage to pay out. You have coverage A, dwelling, which is the walls and the roof and any materials used to service the property like a lawnmower and any materials or supplies next to the house that would become part of the house, like a pallet of roof tiles, whatever. If it is stolen, only covered on a DP3. If it burned in a fire, it would be covered on all three policies because all three policies cover the peril of fire. All right, the next coverage is coverage B. And coverage B is known as other structures. Other structures. Other structures. So this would actually be, oh, and I totally, I'm sorry, B, I forgot you. I should have pre-drawn her. We have a shed. A shed would be an example of coverage B. So coverage B is other structures that is 
any buildings in the backyard, structures in the backyard, anything that is detached from coverage A. So coverage A is the main house, the walls and the roof of the main house. And coverage B is any other buildings or structures that are on the property but are not attached to the main building. So coverage B would be a detached garage or a shed or a gazebo. It would be a structure on the property that is not attached to the house. If you had a garage that was built into the house, the garage would be covered under part A. B is for anything not attached. So my memory trick for coverage B is it's the buildings in the backyard. The coverage B is buildings in the backyard. It's the other structures. And that's what B will pay out to. So if one of you, if you had a shed burned down and just the shed burned down, you would only get allowed however much coverage is on coverage B. And remember, we said that um, coverage A is based on the rebuild of the house, the rebuild of the house or replacement cost. So that's just going to be determined based on how big is the house. Right, Whatever coverage A is, B automatically becomes 10% of whatever A is. So if we had a for example, if we have an example down here, you have coverage A is the house. And let's say it's $100,000 to rebuild. This is coverage A. Then coverage B would be the shed. And you would have $10,000 for the shed. You would actually have $100,000 plus 10 because each of these coverage stands on its own and it's its own amount of money and that's why they separate it that's why a is for the walls and the roof that's why b is for other structures and they each get their own sets amounts of money so a dwelling would be the walls and the roof in this example let's say it's a hundred thousand that's how much money you would get to rebuild these walls and these roofs that's coverage a B automatically is going to be 10% of whatever A is. So since in our example, A is 100,000, then B, the shed, the building in the backyard, would be 10% and be 10,000. And if both of these structures burn down in a fire, you would get 110,000. But you know who wouldn't? get 110? Basic Bob. Basic Bob doesn't get 110. <laughs> There's an exception. Exception to our Basic Bob. Let me switch colors here. Basic Bob has an exception to him. He is not A plus B. In this example here, we just said that 100,000 is coverage A. 100,000 is coverage A, and you get to add 10,000 for B, so that if both of these were to burn down, you would get 110. This is true for every policy but Basic Bob. Basic Bob is not A plus B, no. Basic Bob is A, and you can maybe subtract B if you want, meaning that Basic Bob only gets a hundred thousand and if he wants if he wants he can take 10 for b if he wants but he he that means that he would get 90 for the house and 10 for the shed he would have to basically decide 
if he can rebuild the shed himself, which is why he chose this coverage. He's like, what? I'm going to rebuild the shed from the leftover timber of coverage, timber of coverage A. I don't need money for a shed. That's why he doesn't need it. He doesn't need A plus B. He's A minus B. <laughs> He'll take B out of A or he won't do it. That's why he doesn't need it, right? He won't do it or he doesn't need it. So, but every other policy, Bob is the only one that does this. Every other policy, every other homeowners, it's going to be A plus B. All the other coverages add together. They don't take out of each other or whatever. They add together. Basics Bob's policy is the only one that does that. Um, now, how are they going to word that? If you totally got lost along this way when I started talking A minus B, if you got lost or destroyed in that, I apologize, but I'm just going to give you the direct thing you need to know, okay? Here's how they're going to word it. If they're going to ask you about everything I just said, if they're going to ask you about this, they're going to say it like this. All other, uh, give me a second, let me think about this. Okay, wait. Coverage. B, coverage B is in addition, is in addition, A plus B, A plus B, coverage B is in addition to coverage A, to coverage A, okay, A plus B, coverage B is in addition to coverage A on all policies on all policies except except that dreaded except question coverage b is in addition to coverage a on all policies except and the answer you're looking for is our basic bob d P one, boom. That's all you need to know. If and and you can just write this down, copy it, get it in your head. If all of this wigged you out, <laughs> so it's okay. All right. Coverage B. Yes, that's what we we're talking about. Okay, so coverage B is other structures, and it is automatically coverage B is automatically. 10% of whatever coverage A is, and coverage A is the walls and the roof, and all these coverages are on all these policies. The difference between these policies is what perils they respond to, with DP1 responding to barely any, DP2 being much more broad in the perils, and DP3 so special it'll cover all of them, even theft. Okay, so uh, next coverage that we have is... Contents, contents, contents. My computer is giving up. Okay, contents coverage. Um, contents, also known as personal property. Personal property. Okay. Contents or personal property. This is all of your stuff. Your clothes, your furniture, your shoes, your pots, your pans, your electronics, your CDs, your photo albums, everything, your pillows, your blankets, all your stuff, everything that you would put in a U-Haul and take with you somewhere else is coverage C, your contents. And that's what coverage C is. And you're going to be like, but wait a minute. You said, you said no contents. And I'll be like, yes, thank you for remembering. I'm so glad I instilled that into your head. Okay, 
What this is down here is this is kind of more like a placeholder where it is certainly very optional and easy because it's automatically just waiting to be activated. Think of coverage C as like grayed out when you buy a dwelling policy and you can turn it on, you can activate it, but it's just a kind of like a placeholder. It's just waiting to be activated, but it's not automatic unless it's activated. So the only way that you know you have it is if there is a premium charge for it. You would have to see a dollar sign on the deck page to have it. You would have to see that. And um, coming back up over here, we want to add a dollar sign to here to actually indicate we can buy these. We can buy both liability and contents coverage um, on the dwelling. Right? Dwelling, again, is very a la carte. You can pick and choose what you want. So you can certainly add liability and you can add contents, um, but it's not automatic. Okay. Coverage C is a grayed out option. It's there. It would have to be turned on though. And the way to turn it on is to give it some money on the declaration page. Okay. All right. Oh, and, oh, and if you did have it, if you did have it, it will automatically come at 50% of A. So remember, A is the main coverage, the dwelling, the walls, and the roof. Uh, what would it take to rebuild the, the A frame house? How much money would you need for that? That would be, you know, 100000 You would automatically get 10000 more to pay for the structures in the backyard and you would automatically get 50% of that number more for contents. So you would actually have 100000 for the house plus 10000 for other structures plus... 50,000 for contents if it was activated. Remember, it has to be activated on the declaration page. Okay. All right. The next coverage is coverage D. And this is a uh, lot. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. They're different on homeowners and dwelling. <laughs> so we have to make sure we write down the right one. So it's different, different on dwelling and homeowners. D is different. Dwelling and homeowners, D is different. On a dwelling policy, since we're thinking of landlords, coverage F is known as fair rental value. Fair rental value. Because what is a landlord going to care about when his house burns down and his tenants who were paying their rent are now gone because they are not going to pay him rent to a building that doesn't exist. So he wants fair rental value. If the house burns down, he's going to want fair rental value paid to him while they are rebuilding the house. The insurance company will literally pay his rent money to him while they are rebuilding the house. And they will use coverage D to do that. D is fair rental value. And it automatically comes at 20% of coverage A. Now, again, homeowners is different. Even the number is going to be different on homeowners, so be cautious of that. Um, so fair rental value is going to be the rent money that the landlord is missing because the tenants had to move out because the house burned down. Um, there, In that instance, there would be no coverage C. Like, there's no, if the tenants are the ones who were in the house, there's no coverage C for the landlord. But if the house burned down, coverage A would rebuild the walls and the roof. Coverage B would rebuild the shed in the backyard, unless you're basic Bob, who's going to rebuild the shed himself, because uh, otherwise he'd have to take that 10% out of his A. Um, everyone else gets an extra 10% to build the shed. Uh, no contents coverage if a tenant was living there. And then you would get 20% of fair rental value if the house 
were to burn down, um, your tenants leave, you get to make your rent money still from the insurance company while rebuilding the house using coverage A. And you would run out though if you stayed at the fancy hotel. So keep in mind, this coverage will only pay out as much money is available. And, and the money available here is 20% of whatever A is. So if we go back to our example, we have coverage, uh, shoot, we might as well just draw a little chart here. If we have coverage A is the walls and roof, and coverage B, oh yeah, green is good. Coverage B is the shed. And coverage C would be the stuff inside. Forgot our numbers here. B, A, right? Then D is, and this is um, and, uh, also something to point out that these are all the direct losses. The direct losses on the policy can happen to A, B, and C. These are all direct losses. Direct losses are direct physical damage. A direct loss is direct physical damage. Missed rent money is not a direct physical damage. Missed rent money is an indirect loss. Indirect loss would be missed rent money. So these coverages A, C, and B are all direct loss. And then you have coverage D is the hotel if there was a direct loss. If there was a fire to the house, if there was a fire, y'all can't live there. You got to go to the hotel and that's coverage. Well, hotel and, sorry, <laughs> technically the hotel would be coverage E. That's the next one. Um, hotel or missed rent money. It's a good point. Sorry, I fumbled there. But the, um, that's the next one. So Fair rental value is the missed rent money. And then coverage E is additional living. That's the hotel. So I jumped the gun there a little bit. Additional living. This one is the this one is the hotel. The hotel. And this one is the missed rent. Okay. So uh, D is a, a fair rental value, missed rent money that the landlord is not earning because the tenants moved out because the house burned down. That That's what coverage D pays out for. And it's the value of it is 20% of whatever A is and it's an extra 20%. We just take whatever the value of A is to determine how much D is, but it's its own amount of money. To pay for the missed rent. Now, you actually have to share this 20% between D and E. So together, you only have 20% for missed rent and your hotel. So not a lot of um, option here. Now, this is why. So you might say additional living hotel. Wouldn't the landlord need to live there? Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> So dwelling policies can actually work for duplexes where the owner lives on one side and he rents out the other side. If he was a duplex owner, he might need 
C and D and E because he lives there. Oh, by the way, there's no F. I'm sorry. Jump the gun too. That's, that's homeowners. There's no F on. Actually, there is F, but not a lot of people are tested on it. So let me actually put that in. There is F and that's, that's for buying the liability. I'm not, I'm not really going to talk about it too much, but that's for buying liability on, um, a dwelling policy. Okay. So coverage E though, um, this is implying though that the landlord does live at the house. So he may not need it, which is why basic Bob has said, you better take that off my policy or else. <laughs> so they allowed it to be an endorsement on a DP1. They allowed it to be an endorsement. And insurance companies, you know, they love Basic Bob. He never files claims and he barely requires much money. So they'll give him what he wants. So they'll say, fine, fine, fine. We will, we will leave coverage E as endorsement only. On a DP1. So the only way that Bob would have additional living is if he chose it and paid for it. He would have to chose it and paid for it extra. A little whipped cream on his basic coffee, you know, if he chose it. Okay, so that's coverage E, additional living at the hotel. And it's sharing the 20% with the um, fair rental value coverage D amount. All right. So like we said, all these coverages are on all these policies. These policies are different because of what they will respond to. DP1 will only respond to the perils of fire, lightning, and internal explosion. The only way coverage A, B, C, D, E, or F would pay out is if, not F technically, but <laughs> F liability would be like your dog bit them or something not related to fire, lightning, wind, hail. Well, I guess technically that would be a peril, you know, your dog bite. But anyway, um, that's not a peril. Don't ever think about dog bite as a peril. Never attach that thought in your head. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> okay, coverage uh, F. Um, coverage E, uh, yes. So all these coverages, unless excluded, all these coverages apply to all these policies. The only difference is what perils these policies will trigger out as. DP1 triggers only for fire, lightning, and internal explosion. DP2 broad triggers for all of this and even more perils known as BBB ice golf, like the weight of ice, snow, or sleet, or freezing if it was, if the owner took steps to maintain heat in the building. And then we learned that the DP3 is so special, it's totally open, even covers theft, whoa, and theft of that, you know, lawnmower or materials or supplies. Fire, though, for all the other policies for that stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's just about it. Don't forget, $500 per tree, DP2 and 3. And you have, let's see, DP1, no tree coverage. Yep, yep, yep. All right, good stuff. All right, if y'all love this, please make sure, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, help anyone else you know that is passing the exam. And if you are in need of one-on-one -on -one services, I offer that through Voxer where you can audio message me while you are studying. Have me immediately answer your questions within reason, right? I obviously have a life, but I'm pretty fast and efficient at responding to you. Um, and yeah, you can uh, find that all on my links. So check the links in the comments in the descriptions and things like that to get uh, to get your serv to work with me one on one. And then you can also email me and work in our Facebook group. We're having a very active group of people who are studying. You you might even find a study buddy, and that's on Facebook. I'm everywhere as the Insurance Exam Queen, so that's where you can find us at on Facebook. And this was a lesson in dwelling policies. And y'all have a wonderful day. I'm sending you all the love and all the vibes that you are passing this exam. Woo!